following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to start out our show today uh, with the DAX like we usually do. But before we do that, I wanted to make a quick announcement. I am not going to be here tomorrow. Uh, it's a little travel date, so uh, we have a holiday on Friday. I want to wish everybody a uh, happy uh, Easter or whatever uh, religion or non-religion that you have. Take the day off and uh, enjoy yourself. Uh, we'll start out the chart. As you can see here, uh, we had some pretty good support yesterday uh, in the DAX as it was making its low. Uh, we had been looking at that, of course, with the larger uh, time frame here. And you'll see that we did get down to that 11, 000, or excuse me, 12,050 level, which was a perfect 61% retracement of the low we made back um, just a few uh, weeks ago. Well, yeah, it was two weeks ago. So this is major support. And what we do, we rallied up into uh, pretty, pretty strong resistance. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, just taking a quick look at what the market's doing. Uh, we'll, we'll just do this one thing at a time here so we can keep an eye on it. First of all, we're going to start out here with the uh, E-mini S&P uh, to give you an idea. This is something that we were looking at yesterday. Uh, you know, we had a pretty good move in some of these things. And as you can see here, uh, we had a really good rally uh, after the low was made down there at the uh, 2334 level. And uh, all we did was rally up exactly to the 61% retracement of the whole move. That came in at the uh, 2356 level last night. We've sold off about 10 handles uh, since, that, since that point. So we're still in a downtrend. My, my feeling is, is that we're going to be heading down into this uh, 2326 level over the next few days. Remember, folks, the day following a holiday, uh, or the day before a holiday, which will be our Thursday trading tomorrow, has about a 75% chance of closing higher that day. It only has to close higher by a point or two, but um, that's usually what the odds say. So keep an eye on that. Uh, that's a pretty strong statistic that goes back a, a very, 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 very long time. Okay, now we're going to switch the gears, and we're going to rock and roll here. Uh, those of you that trade that E-mini a lot, E-mini S&P, I just want to give you a heads up here of what we're going to be looking at now over the next couple of minutes. I'm going to post into the uh, Tiger Room here. Um, this is gold, a 60-minute 60, uh, uh, 60 chart going back over the last three weeks. And all I did was I posted the large swing, uh, you know, moves of $15 in gold uh, or greater over the past uh, three weeks. As you can see, you know, we had a whole bunch of those. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. They totaled a total value of 20500 uh, You can see the first one was 2100 The second one was 2100 then 2500 1800 1600 2200 2600 And now we're coming in to this last one, and it should be 34 uh, dollars an ounce, right, which is the harmonic number. Well, that's what we're looking for. So if we take a look at what gold actually did, you'll see yesterday, uh, right after the close, and uh, it was still in the closing ranges of the market while we were trading overnight, you'll notice we got up exactly to that number, 1281.60. Now, that should be a pretty significant high in the gold market, if that is correct. Now, silver still hasn't taken out those highs of uh, 1850, but it could do that in a heartbeat, folks. It doesn't take, you know, very long uh, for that to happen. But watch it very, very closely here because it's got some interesting uh, characteristics as far as patterns and things. But if you want to trade something with really great volatility, folks, start looking at the gold market. Uh, the margin on the gold is about twice what it is 
Actually, it's not. Yeah, it is. No, it's about the same. It's about the same margin that we have on the E-mini S&P. And, of course, day trade margins are even less. But it gives you the volatility three or four times uh, the moves that we get. We don't see a $2,000 move, you know, 40 points in the S&P very often. But you see it all the time in the gold market. So that that's a, that's a very good trading vehicle, you know, for watching these, uh, these markets uh, – from a good good standpoint of you know taking you know what we're going to be looking at here, okay yes, uh, okay we do have let's just get on we have a question here about one of our favorite stocks <laughs> from our good friend Priceline Charlie down in La Paz Mexico we're going to take a quick look here uh, at the um, the price line that we looked at uh, remember it was about two weeks ago when we were up there at that 1798 level that was the 1.618 level folks we never went a dollar above that uh, that was the exact number uh, we didn't hit 1800 and uh, right now we're trading at uh, 1768 which is down uh, 30 points from from that level now this is a most difficult stock to trade believe me if you think tesla is hard to trade you should really don't even stay away from this one i'm bringing this to your attention just because of the technical parameters for it this stock is a little bit uh, easier uh, to get as far as uh, short selling as opposed to tesla which is you know, most of it's held by Elon Musk and his uh, consortium. So this one is a little bit better, but still at $1,700, I mean, this is amazing. When I first started trading stocks back in 1959, the most expensive stock on the New York Stock Exchange was Superior Oil. Uh, it was $1,200 a share, and it was impossible to sell short because there was just nothing uh, out there that uh, you could get. I mean, it was all held by, you know, certain people. Uh, and when I moved to uh, San Luis Obispo, I happened to run into a doctor that actually had a thousand shares of superior oil that had been in the family for like 40 years. That was like 1.2 million. That was 1965. And uh, let me tell you, that was a, uh, a big thing. He sold it. Um, I believe yeah, he sold it in January of 65, and that was a monster day in the stock market because, folks, believe it or not, we did record volume in January 1965 in the New York Stock Exchange, and I'm doing this from memory, at 5 million shares in one day. Wow. Was that big or what? We do more than that in Intel in the first 20 minutes, just Intel. You know, who knows? We'll see. Yes, you have to say that uh, Tesla is a buy because it is in an uptrend. There's no question about it. Had a little bit of a sell-off yesterday, but it's uh, certainly still in an uptrend. Well, you know, you can't you can't deny it. You know, there's just no question about it. it. Has lots of gaps everywhere, and we've talked about that before. But let's get on to the markets that we could really trade, folks. Keep an eye on this bond market. I might be uh, I might be wrong here. And because I am wrong quite a bit. But one of the things that I've been watching, of course, uh, starting at the end of last week was uh, the fact that we've had this beautiful three drive to a bottom, three drive to a top pattern in the Treasury notes. Uh, it's a really nice pattern. Now, notes have not taken out the previous day's highs like we did in the bonds. And remember, the notes are six times the volume and, and open interest uh, of the um, uh, uh, of the of the bonds, but they don't have the same volatility. The bonds swing, you know, greater in price. So keep an eye on that. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS 
has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the um, Treasury. Uh oh, I thought I did. Where did it go? Shut the front door and raise the rent. Give me one second, please. I was posting the um, weekly chart of the uh, Treasury uh, notes in the room, and something happened. They didn't get in. Give me a second. There it is. Uh, you can see here that we've completed an ABCD pattern here uh, last Friday. That was equivalent to that three drive pattern on the daily. Whether that means anything or not, folks, I don't know, but that's uh, Mother God and Country stuff. Uh, the $64 question is whether it's going to work. That's, uh, you know, the bottom line of what we're watching here. Just like in the gold. I mean, just because we we look at that gold. Remember that gold price that we had, 1281 that was an exact uh, within a half a dollar of the 61% retracement of the, the last high we made up in that 1370 uh, area. Uh, not too long ago, about uh, seven or eight months ago. So that's a very important spot. Also remember, folks, that uh, we were also talking about the the XAU, you know, the fact that this market, uh, which is the gold-silver index. Now, what's happened with that? If we take a quick look at that, you'll notice here that the, uh, the XAU has finally got up to the 61% retracement. It had been lagging badly, but it, you know, caught up, and now we've, we've made that. You can see where gold is. It's taken out, uh, you know, the highs of, uh, you know, last February without any trouble, yet we're only at a 61% retracement in the gold-silver index. That would be one thing that I would be a little worried about because before when these markets took off, they were running in tandem, and they don't appear to be doing that at this particular time. That could change at any moment, of course, but that's uh, you know that's what we're watching here as we, as we look at this uh, this particular market here. But uh, we'll we'll do one thing at a time. I'll put this uh, gold chart up here so you can see it here. This is the one that I was looking at. Um, you'll be able to see this. Uh, I don't have it. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Uh, baloney. Uh, 
Well, we'll have to find it another time. Okay, the the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention, folks, is we're seeing divergences here between platinum and silver, gold and the XAU. This is not, I know gold is appearing to be a, a valid breakout, but it's breaking out into a major Fibonacci point with an ABCD pattern and, and everything else, in addition to the fact that you know, we had a full moon yesterday, and gold moves off the moon, you know, very, very, uh, you know, perfectly sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes it it certainly does. So I don't know if this is the breakout or not. We're going to find out um, probably soon enough would be my guess. Now, we're going to take a look now at the um, Dow uh, E-mini. We've had a couple of requests to uh, take a look at that. And uh, you'll be able to see here that yesterday's low was an exact um, 61, uh, excuse me, 78 percent retracement of the low we made back on uh, March the 27th. Uh, this market has lower highs ever since March 1st. Look at the people. Uh, go back to March 1st when we had the congressional uh, speaking uh, with, with both houses of Congress. Look what's happened since that 100 point gap up in the Dow. Uh, we've been down for a month. Uh, well, it's been five weeks, so we're we're due for probably a bounce coming in here. My guess it'll be right after, you know, the the Easter holiday, or maybe it'll start tomorrow. Uh, you know, so we'll just have to let the pattern you know unfold. But right now, it appears that we still should be you know heading to the downside. I believe we've still got a chance to make that uh, uh, 23 uh, 17 level uh, in the E mini S and P. That's 30 handles. Uh, from where we are right now. But remember, we were down almost 20 handles yesterday before the rally. So that's easy uh, to make those kinds of numbers. And that's, that's only, that's only $1,500, folks. And as I pointed out, compared to gold, you know, the E-mini doesn't even move at all. Uh, you know, it does for, you know, two or three minutes at a time, but uh, longer in longer time frames, it's much easier to uh, trade the gold than it is the uh, to trade the uh, E-mini S&P. But the E-mini S&P is the one that has uh, everybody enthralled. And that's why uh, it's so important to uh, keep an eye on it, because there's so many people that take a look at it. One second here. We've got one other thing going on here. And uh, we'll be watching here. Yes, the wheat. Uh, I don't trade Minneapolis wheat, Mr. Z, so I don't really, don't really know. But wheat has uh, the, the regular wheat has rallied good. We were expecting a pretty good rally in that. Tried to buy the corn, just missed it by a penny or two. Uh, we had a pretty good rally in beans yesterday, about 15 cents. So all of the grains look like they've turned. We've also pointed out that low in uh, uh, soybean oil. Uh, a week ago when it was making a perfect Gartley, that one has also uh, rallied quite a bit uh, to keep an eye out. Another one uh, that w that's in the it's in the ballpark here, folks, uh, is the uh, – let's put this up here so we can take a look at it. And that – uh-oh, something's wrong. There we go. One second here. We'll put up the crude oil chart here because we're up against Mother God and country again here. You'll see here that we're right up at that 78% retracement, that number – for the 78% retracement comes in at uh, 78.70. Wow. It must be Wednesday. That number comes in at 53.70, and I think the high so far this morning has been 53.71. Whether that's going to be the high or not, I don't know. That is the 78% retracement. Remember, we hit the 61% retracement back there about three and a half weeks ago when the whole world thought it was going to go to 44 and now we're, you know, back, you know, knocking on the door of 44. If we close above 44, wow, I don't know what's wrong with the numbers today. 54. If we close above 54 in the crude oil, then you probably have something to uh, hang on to that would be, you know, something uh, pretty, substan pretty substantial. The uh, heating oil is uh, also moving up nicely, which they should go in tandem if that is correct. But we are over this major thing. That's correct, Mr. Duffy. I should slow down. And I am going to start talking a little bit slower. Okay, I just got a lot of things going on today, folks. I uh, have so many orders in there. I don't know how I'm going to be able to keep track of all of them today. But we'll watch them as they, they unfold. Remember, uh, we are looking at a... Uh, these gaps in the Dow Jones, I wanted to bring this to your attention one more time since we're not going to be on the air here tomorrow. 
But uh, the next gap that we're looking at for the Dow Jones Industrial Average, boys and girls, will come in at 20200 So this is something that uh, I believe we've already filled the first two gaps. Now we're in the process of filling the next two gaps. After the one at 20270 the next gap will come in at, at 19900 And below 19900 is what we call trouble in River City because that means we are in a pretty substantial correction in the market. Whether it's the top of tops, the holiest of holies, I don't know, but uh, it does have some uh, pretty good, uh, you know, historical things that tell us that we could be down for quite a while. We talked about the fact that Gann always called the years ending in seven the death year, and of course we are. Uh, in the seventh, we're also coming into a major seasonal prep pattern of when you sell in May and go away. So the ideal situation from the bearish side is for it to be bottoming here sometime in late April. My guess is around the 24th, rally into May and then uh, down into the fall. We'll see. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay. 
Okay, folks, we're going to take a quick look here what the markets are doing live before I get back in. I have to move to a different program in order to see this. So the market's really quiet. S&P's opening down just a little bit at uh, 23.46.75. There should be really good support at the uh, 23 uh, 40 level, folks. That's the 61% retracement of the move back. Of course, yesterday we hit the exact 78% level at the uh, 2356 uh, level. So keep an eye on that one uh, as we're as we're going through, you know, looking at some of these things. So right now it's, you know, very, very quiet. Now the next chart that I posted into the room is the chart for the Australian dollar uh, overlaid uh, with gold on it. And as you can see here, there is a real divergence here, folks. Uh, I mean, especially over the last two weeks, you can see that the Australian dollar has been, uh, you know, dropping quite a bit. Uh, that's related to the dollar index, of course, and it's a very small percentage of the dollar index, but gold has continued to go higher. Now, silver still has not taken out that old high at 1850, but it really needs to close above 1850. I was listening to Andy Heck yesterday, and he talked about the fact that uh, gold really needed to close, excuse me, silver really needed to close above the 13, um, excuse me, <laughs> these numbers are getting a little out of whack today. Uh, it needed to close above 1854. Uh, then it would probably be in a valid uh, breakout move. And, and the same thing is true as gold. If we closed above this uh, 18, Wow, 1382. I'm going to start writing this stuff down. 1282 level, then that might be an also a valid breakout uh, in the gold. But we have to wait and see what's going to uh, see if this is going to happen. Now, when I mentioned that there's support in the E mini at uh, the uh, 2340 level, all I'm doing, folks, is I'm looking at a 61% retracement of the move from a 2334 up to 2356. That's 22 handles. 61% of that is 14 handles. You subtract it, and what do you get? You get right down here at the 2342 level, I believe, is the exact number you know, to look at. So far, we're trading at 2344.75, but uh, watch it closely because that should be pretty strong support. And if we go through it, and if we go through it, then you'd be looking at something that would be uh, a little bit more ominous because we still believe that the market is in a downtrend for the reasons that we've already talked about uh, previously. So that's one thing. Now, there's, you know, I, I look at a lot of charts, folks, and I'm pretty good at the pattern recognition stuff. But boy, there's sometimes that it really gets a little bit, uh, a little bit crazy. And this is one particular time. I want to show you the uh, dollar index, what it's doing here. Uh, we'll just put it up here to take a look at it. This was uh, as of this morning, and we'll put it up here, and you'll be able to see it. What's interesting is you'll notice here that the dollar index rallied up to the, um, the uh, just a little above the 61% retracement here on uh, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, of course. Wow. I'm going to have to call that end of days nursing home today and see if they still have some vacancies. Uh, anyway, the 61% retracement was just a little above 101. We backed off for a day. That's normal. But what's really not normal is the fact that the euro should be screaming. I mean, the euro should be, you know, running like a like a ruptured duck, and it's not doing that at all. You know, it's basically trading where it's been for the last several days, and that's a very unusual situation. So my assumption is something really dramatic is going to happen here, either in the euro, which is the opposite of the dollar index, or some of these other currencies like the Japanese yen, which has been under a great deal of pressure, uh, might might change. So I don't know, but that's very unusual to, to see that uh, to see that happening. So uh, those are just some of the things that when I look at all these different patterns, when you see a divergence like this, this means real money is moving, folks. This is not funny money. And when you're talking about these currencies, that's a that's a real that's a big deal. That's a big cash deal. So you need to pay you know very very close attention to that one. And, and not only that, we've got so many of these um, things that are hitting major Fibonacci points, crude oil. Uh, gold, uh, silver, um, 
copper. I mean, there's just uh, all kinds of them. Bonds, I mean, and notes. I mean, they're just all coming in here together. And the fact that we had this uh, full moon yesterday is important. Now, someone asked a question yesterday uh, whether the full moon had anything to do you know, with the um, thing that happened with United Airlines, I don't know if it did or not. I, you know, that's way beyond my pay grade. But, you know, that was bad. You know, that was bad no matter what, it, no matter what it was. So we'll see. Anyway, we'll watch this, uh, you know, closely as we go through uh, the rest of the day. And to start to see, you know, some of these things uh, unfold and we'll do one thing at a time today, and we'll move on to the next one. We're going to have our good friend Norm Winsky is going to be on uh, a week from today. Uh, he's going to be talking to us about something uh, very, very important. That'll be on April 19th. Uh, I'm also planning to have Bill Meridian on shortly, and uh, also Shane Smolian, both of those gentlemen. And then I've got a couple other surprise guests coming on. Stan Harley will come on. Uh, sometime in May, Mr. Z, I'm going to try to get him on uh, once or twice a month. I enjoy talking with him. My guys, we used to we used to see each other almost every day in the old Conti office. But uh, uh, you know, he's still hanging in there just like me. So we're the same age, and he's still going strong. He does great work, by the way. And of course, he called for that April 5th high, which has so far, you know, been the high uh, that we've had uh, in the you know, last week. Whether that's going to continue or not. You know, we'll wait to see. But he does really good work with his uh, his daily time cycles that uh, do pretty well. And when they match up with the uh, FIB numbers, you know, sometimes they're even better. You know, that's the, that's the key thing, you know, to look at. The, you know, folks, I've been looking at astrology for a long time. And, boy, I see glimpses that, wow, this could be it. But, frankly, uh, I, I have quit looking for the Holy Grail. Uh, the Holy Grail is between your ears. It's that nine-inch cycle between your left ear and your right ear. Um, SR means uh, retrograde station, Mr. P. That's what that means. In other words, it's going from either retrograde to um, direct or direct to retrograde. That means change in station is what that means in the astrology. One of the few things I know about the astrology. Uh, well, I know a few other things. But anyway, when I was doing this book with 20 minutes, oh, this was 30 years ago. God, it's 30 years ago. You're right. Wow. Uh, with Dr. Ruth and uh, Jim Twentyman, boy, I tell you, I was amazed at some of the things that we would see on the computer, that how some of these things would line up. And I really thought that, uh, in fact, when I when I called the high in uh, August of 1987, boy, I really thought I was the cat's meow. And, uh, you know, I was really feeling great. Uh, the next turn I called uh, was 1991. Well, not quite that bad, but it, uh, it was a long time before I hit anything, you know, spot on. You know, the, what, the other thing, that the, the Bradley model, I have totally misinterpreted it. You know, it's been going up. And I, I just relate to the patterns. You know, that's really all I relate to. I, I can see the patterns. The patterns tell me two things, whether it's ending, whether it's beginning, and how much I have to risk. That's all I really need to know. Because in the risk-reward equation, the only thing you have control over is the risk. And you've got to remember that. 877-927-6648. Sarah? Sarah? If you're looking to unearth a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, consider the new market-safe core commodity CD from EverBank. This five-year U.S. dollar-denominated CD gives you exposure to four equally weighted commodities, gold, copper, WTI oil, and sugar, in one powerful CD. With no pricing caps, you can potentially earn an unlimited upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across semi-annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There's no annual percent yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. With certain commodities on the rebound, now is the time to take advantage. The March 23rd funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once more, that's 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. 
TFNN has put together the finest live programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast nine hours a day starting at 8 a.m. as John Logan kicks us off each trading day with the Global Market Pulse. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour, following the Tom O'Brien Show. Mondays and Fridays, catch live trading on the Nadex platform with hosts Tom and Tommy O'Brien, along with Gerald Martin on the Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN show and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks. I have a request to take a look at the bonds again, uh, and I will. But I wanted to uh, show you a couple of really, uh, really bearish charts from foreign markets. Uh, probably nothing that anyone trades, but just shows you the overall picture. The first one, of course, is the Japanese market. Uh, you can see here that we topped here in January. Uh, we made a little bit uh, lower high here back in early March. And look what we're doing now. We're taking out the yearly lows, and we're down sharply again uh, last night. So this is not up to date, but it's uh, heading down, which is a very, very rough uh, chart looking from a bullish standpoint. This thing flat looks uh, really, really bearish. Now, if we uh, move a little bit over to the east, we're going to take a look here at the uh, Hang Seng Index out of Hong Kong. And again, you'll see here the same situation where we completed the uh, ABCD pattern up there at the 24,600 level. And now we've broken down. And again, we were again lower last night. So this is also breaking down. You can see we've had lower highs, you know, uh, ever since the, uh, the 20th of uh, March. And uh, this is well into three weeks now. So it looks like it's still uh, heading to the downside. Now, our, market, our, our markets have not done that. Mainly because the um, the Nikkei the Nikkei the Nasdaq has been you know so very very strong so that's it now I've had uh, one other request and then we'll get to the bonds here for just one more, for one last time uh, this is the Amazon we've been looking at this all week because it has a potential to have some pretty good uh, you know corrective properties here to the tune of about a uh, hundred dollars a share possibly but as you can see today. Uh, yesterday, we hit the exact 61% retracement up there at 910. We backed off to uh, 897. And now, uh, just looking at this little 15-minute chart, we have a nice little Gartley forming at the uh, 906 level. So the difference between your 906 and your 912 is $4 a share. So you can trade that without, uh, you know, $4 a, st a share of a $900 stock is less than one half of 1%. So that's a very, very low risk with a you know, pretty good profit potential. So remember, it's all related to the amount of money that you risk, not how much money you, you're going to make, because that's where people, you know, run into, you know, major problems. And you don't want to have that happen because it makes it a little bit more difficult you know, to do some of these things when you're uh, when you focus on how much you want to make, as opposed to how much you want to risk. That's the that's the real key 
you know, to uh, following some of these uh, things as you look. Think, think in terms of how much money you risk, not how much money you're going to make. That's the big difference. Winners think how much money I can lose. Losers think how much money I can win. This is the whole premise of how Las Vegas is predicated. They base this on the fact that we have a situation where people are looking at what's on the machine, whether it's sevens, seven, seven, or um, a Kino game where you can win, uh, you know, $250,000 for a $1 bet or something like that. They're always focused on how much money you can possibly make. Nowhere on a slot machine does it ever say, you have no chance of beating me long term, and it doesn't say I've taken in $1.2 million more than I've given out. You just don't see that. You focus. They focus on what's the, the flashing lights is how much money you can win. That doesn't mean you can't play it because it's entertainment, but, you know, don't risk uh, – don't risk anything. Put 20, 30 bucks in, and that's it. If you if you don't win after 20, 30 bucks, you know, move on. Find a different stagecoach. There's always another one coming by. Okay, I want to move over to a, uh, do the bonds now one more time for our good friend in the room, Mr. P here, and we'll take a look at these bonds. I just wanted to uh, show you the overall. We're still trading above this number, so give me a second. This was as of Friday, and uh, as you know, we did go up, and we took out this high last night at uh, 50, 153.09. So we did take that high out. We did not take that high out in the notes, which is the larger of, of the commodities. This trade, the notes has six times the open interest of the bonds. So this could be uh, just an aberration. Now we're trading at, uh, you know, 52, 152.20. So there's a possibility of this uh, going in. But uh, that that's mainly the difference is because the, the bonds have more volatility uh, because it's uh, thirty-one dollars a point, and it has uh, it moves a thousand dollars like nothing. Whereas the bonds, the notes move about one half the volatility of the bonds. But boy, they have a lot. That's the largest of any of the commodity contracts that we trade, folks. Is the Treasury notes? That's the that's what they call the big daddy rabbit in the um, in the trade of uh, trading futures. But watch it, you know. Uh, carefully. Uh, re another question about the grains. Yes, I believe we've made some type of a pretty good bottom here in the grains. Remember, we were looking at this full moon coming in this week. Uh, so far, the market bottomed yesterday. We had a negative report uh, in soybeans. We've already rallied 17 cents off the bottom. Uh, wheat's rallied another five or six cents. Where we're watching this very, very closely because this is the seasonal time when you usually get the grains to start to turn. So that's one of the things that we're looking at. Now, I had orders in, you know, to buy the corn. I missed it by just a little bit. So what I have to do now is to refine the entry point. What I usually do is I'll wait for the first rally to finish, usually somewhere between three and five days, and then buy that pullback. That's what I'll be watching very, very closely because at that point, I'll know that my risk is under the lows that we made this week. That is, you can just uh, circle that because if we get below that, you know, there's uh, there's going to be serious trouble to the downside uh, in the grains. I had another question about the copper. Uh, I don't have a copper chart this morning, but I do know that the real key level in copper to look at, folks, is, is 255 a pound. If we get below 255 a pound, that has so much bearish implications that it's uh, it's like getting below 19,000 in the Dow now. That's how bearish that would be. So, um, you know, that's going to be a long time before that happens. Well, at least we think it is. But uh, that 255, if you're trading copper, is really, really important. And uh, as a matter of fact, anything below 257 is probably going to alert you that you're getting ready to see a, a big drop uh, in some of these things. As far as the uh, other metals, as I mentioned, we need silver to get above this uh, 1855 level on a closing basis. That could be a breakout. And if gold gets above the uh, 17, um, 20, wow, 12,080 two level on a closing basis that would also be bullish so both of those would be ones that you want to uh, you know sort of keep an eye on as you as you look at uh, some of these things uh, occurring so watch them watch them closely that's basically the um, the, the my my recommendation is just to keep an eye on them getting back to the stock market uh, someone's asked about this the importance of this level in the S&P that we talked about this morning uh, so far our low has been uh 
uh, 243.50. We were looking for it to come in around 242. Folks, that's only three points. This is amateur hour, for heaven's sakes. You know, anything can happen. So be patient if you're waiting for some of these numbers. I mean, you know, they're not going to hit them exactly all the time, but when they do hit them, you know, then you have a pretty good chance of, uh, you know, something pretty dramatic happening. So you've got to wait until that actually occurs. You know, that's the key to this is patience. Be like the doctor. Have an office full of patience. That's what you really need. Okay, folks, that's it. We're going to take a little break here, I think, in a second. Then we'll finish up the show for the week. And uh, we'll have probably a, a guest in in my place tomorrow. And we'll be watching it. But we'll be right back after these few words. Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we've got about a minute or two here to wind this up. I think the main thing to keep in mind, I'm going to post what I think are the most important charts to watch for the next couple of days. The first one, of course, here is this weekly chart uh, in the Treasury notes, and you'll be able to see uh, what's going on, and uh, that's pretty much it. So we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, the question popped up, if bonds get above 154, 
Uh, I, what will I see? I will see someone who's taken a loss in a short bond trade. But uh, if they get above, if actually the key number to watch in bonds is not 154 in my opinion. It's the 1.618 expansion of the yesterday's range, which would take you to 153.24. Uh, I mean, well, you know, it's within eight ticks of bonds. That's nothing. But watch the notes. I mean, the notes have not made new highs. Uh, they're lagging a little bit, which uh, that's unusual because they've been the leader all the way. And uh, keep an eye on that. Also, watch this NASDAQ, folks, because that's the one that had been the leader, and it's starting to quiver a little bit. You know, it's not a question of, uh, you know, whether it's going to be it. Yes, we could hit uh, 156, 157 in bonds, and I'm wrong a lot, so uh, I'm certainly not going to be short between, uh, you know, 153.20 and 156. I will certainly, I might not be long, but I'm certainly not going to be short if it does that but watch it this has got to be related to what's happening with the dollar so watch the euro the euro is lagging badly um, that means if the euro gets back below that 10540 level we are well actually 10560 you know then the dollar index is going to be turning and uh, then there's a whole different uh, set of parameters uh, that you'll lose but the key level in that euro to watch is the 10560 that's only you know 40 points from where we are right now that's about 500 bucks so that could happen in in a heartbeat so those are the key numbers uh, to keep an eye on. But we see major divergence here in the U.S. dollar and the currencies. It's just uh, we've seen it in the Australian dollar. We're seeing it in the in the yen uh, to some extent. But uh, that's it. If we take a, finally take a quick look here at the yen here uh, at the very end of the show here, you'll notice that uh, we did have a minor resistance, but looks lower to me. It's that time of the year again, and that means the Spring Tiger Dollar Sale is back. TFNN has just announced that our best Tiger Dollar Sale of the year is back this week only. Right now, you can get up to a 50% bonus on whatever you spend on Tiger Dollars. Tiger Dollars can be used for any TFNN newsletter or service and are a great way to add extra savings to any TFNN product. Tiger Dollars never expire and are fully transferable. Whether you're a current subscriber or plan on purchasing anything in the future, this is a great time to get your Tiger Dollars. Remember, this sale ends Sunday and we're closed on Friday with the market, so don't delay. The Spring Tiger Dollar Sale with the potential to earn a 50% bonus on your purchase only comes around once a year, so don't let it pass you by. For all the details and to get your Tiger Dollars today, visit the front page of TFNN.com.